Good morning, everyone. It's Mary Weber, Travel Guru Girl. This morning, I wanted to talk to you about um, Travel Girls on the Go and our cruise with Glenda on April 26th to May the 7th. It is a Mediterranean cruise starting in Lisbon and ending in Rome. So I'm just going to share my screen for a second here. And we are going to... Okay, there we are. And so this gives you a picture of the itinerary. It just makes it a little bit easier to see where you're going. So Lisbon is on the coast of Portugal. Portugal is this area right in here. And uh, Lisbon is right in the very middle. So when you're going on a cruise like this, this um, will have quite a number of stops on it. And it will give you a really in-depth um idea of the these different places along this itinerary so it's a taste of these destinations and then in the future if you wanted to um, go back to them or see them in further depth then you could do that it this will really give you a very good taste of these destinations so Lisbon is in Portugal it's on the coast um, and so that's where we're going to start. Now, when you travel to Lisbon, I su would suggest at least, well, one day in advance for sure because of planes and sometimes they're late and you don't want to miss the cruise. So you want to go in the day before the cruise starts, which would be April the 25th. I highly recommend at least two days, which would make it coming in on April the 24th. And the reason being for that is that um, you will be tired. It uh, You'll have an eight hour time change ahead, which means when we're sleeping, they're awake, et cetera, et cetera. So when you first arrive, you'll probably feel like sleeping in the middle of the day just because you didn't get enough sleep on your, on your plane ride. So uh, that's one of the reasons to come in early and also maybe to explore Lisbon a little bit more. So when we do a group uh, like this, we... Um, get a certain pricing that's less than what you might see online now. Uh, when the cruise is getting booked up, the pricing starts going up and then they will take, they give me a certain date to sell uh, at the price I have. And it, it, when that date arrives and uh, I haven't booked them all, they take those uh, cabins back at that price and they will charge whatever the current price is. So if you want to go on this cruise, I encourage you to book now while the pricing is really, really good. Uh, otherwise, you can still book into the cruise later, but it will cost you more. So why not save money? Now, another reason uh, you would like to take this cruise is, number one, the ship is very, very new. It was built last year. So new and it's banking uh, has lots of new amenities on it. And it's with the Norwegian Cruise Lines Viva. Um, and also the time of year. The reason we put, picked the end of April and beginning of May, uh, pricing is a little bit better. So um less crowds and that's important because after COVID people have just gone wild and are going on cruises and tours and all kinds of vacations in Europe and so it's very very busy and if you want to get the best time period to go this is one of the best times other than going in uh, later in the fall late September or early October but our group is planning to go during this time period. So the next destination after Lisbon will be um, Seville. No, I think it's Gibraltar, actually. And Gibraltar is right, you've heard of the Rock of Gibraltar. So it's right over here. And it's really right across from, uh, this country here is Africa, and it's, it's across from Morocco. So on a clear day, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to see from um, Gibraltar. It also uh, is still a British colony. So it, it's here you know, at the bottom of, of Portugal and the bottom of Spain. So it makes it kind of interesting. Neat old rock um, is what it is, formation. And um, that's where you would go. After that, then you, there would be a stop in Seville. And Seville is a very romantic city. Romantic being it's very beautiful. Uh, there's lots to see there. It's different than some of the other cities in Spain. And it truly is one of my favorites. After you leave Seville, you will go to the island of 
Ibiza and Palma. And again, those are two, they're islands. So they have different things to offer, different things to look at, uh, maybe some beaches and some different um, kind of scenery to see. When you're done there, you will go to Barcelona. And Barcelona is one of those really sweet cities that's so different. Again, the architecture is very interesting. It was influenced a lot by Gaudi, who was an architect, and he really created different looking um, buildings. Um, and the Sagrada Familia is another one of those. It's a famous church that's been built for at least, I think, coming up to 200 years and has not been completed. It's truly unique and a must-see when you're in Barcelona. So again, there's lots to see and do in Barcelona. Shopping is wonderful as well. It's just a truly unique city. When you leave uh, Barcelona, you will be going on to Provence. And when you hit Provence, everybody's heard of Provence and the lavender fields, that sort of thing. It's a little early for lavender in the fields. However, it is the um, gateway to Provence. So you may want to take um, a short trip into one of the little communities in Provence that's offered from the ship and uh, uh, take that in and get a taste for what Provence might be like. Then on to the can, a con, where they have the con uh, film festival and you'll have seen actors and actresses along that area when they go to introduce their new films for the year. And uh, it again, beautiful uh, area, uh, beautiful beaches, nice shopping, that sort of thing. And then after we're done in con, the next day we're back in Genoa. So Genoa is one of the largest, oldest uh, ports along the Italian coast. And um, uh, again, a very interesting place to visit. And it's also it, uh, Genoa and then Florence. So in between Genoa and Florence, there's a, an area called the Cinque Terre, which is the five, five little um, cities that are right along the coastline. Quite often people will do walks there. I don't know that there would be time to do that on this particular itinerary, but if you were doing a land tour in um, Italy, that would be the thing that you might want to do there. It's truly a unique and beautiful, beautiful area. Area. Um, so really, really nice to visit. Uh, once you hit Florence, Florence is kind of um, the Renaissance time. All the artists and, and from the middle of 14 to 1600s, lots of art influence. The famous David is there. There's great museums. So if people want or like art, that's a great place to visit. Uh, otherwise, the shopping is tremendous, of course. Um, it, lots of leather goods, beautiful wallets and purses and jackets, but other nice jewelry as well, uh, shopping there. And then once you have left Florence, you're in Rome. So when you hit Rome, you would want to stay a couple of extra days if you've never been there before, because Rome... Um, Rome, uh, the Roman Empire really went all the way from over a few thousand years, went from the United Kingdom all the way to Turkey. And so their influence on everything during um, 2,500 years uh, is good to see there. So uh, there's the Colosseum, there's uh, the Vatican, of course, and many, many other things to see. So don't miss a chance. If you're there, don't say, oh, I'm just going home. Uh, please take the time to spend a couple of extra days there because it will be well worth it. And that would be your cruise and any add-ons that you want to do. So the balconies start at 5189 and there are other categories available. There is some studios that are specifically for a single traveler. There, um, that starts at about 49.40 plus your airfare. So um, when we have a group going together, the nice thing is that you won't ever be alone. And with the, uh, when you do book a studio for a single traveler, it allows you access to um, a specific lounge for single travelers as well. And it's really great because you would visit, be able to visit with the other people in this lounge that are also solo travelers. So I think a great opportunity for you. Um, the I do have here that the deposit is five fifty, but I actually believe it's three hundred and thirty eight dollars. So they keep changing some of this, but I do need deposits for the better pricing by Monday, October the twenty first. If you want some further information on this cruise, 
please uh, get a hold of me. If you want to deposit, please get a hold of me. If you're looking for a roommate, please get a hold of me. So that would be um, that cruise. And I encourage you to get those deposits in as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you. And I look forward to hearing back from you.